Hi guys, welcome to Masky by K. Thank you so much for watching. Today I have not a makeup video, but a very personal video. And I wanted to share this video because it really helped me a lot hearing these videos, hearing, seeing these videos prior to labor, especially since I am a first time mom. Um, I wanted to know all the tea on what to expect during labor. Now keep in mind, every pregnancy, every labor is different. I am just sharing my labor and delivery and this is pretty much what happened or as far as I can remember. Because for some reason, um, when you go into labor, like you kind of forget certain details and stuff, even like a few hours after everything that's going on, just because you're going through so much pain. But yep, yeah, this is my labor story and I hope that you guys enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe to like this video and you, if you enjoyed it and let's get started. All right, so first thing that I did want to say is that I had to get induced. My labor wasn't natural um because my baby didn't want to come out of the womb so i actually gave birth at 41 weeks um the little baby this little baby did not want to come out i was one centimeter dilated for four weeks straight so i don't know what happened there but yeah so i wasn't dilating and because well my doctor was just concerned that um, you know time passing that it could bring complications for the labor um, with me and for the baby so he decided that it would be best to get induced he actually wanted me to get induced like at 39 weeks yeah like at 39 weeks but I told him that I wanted to wait a little bit and see if the baby would come naturally but it wasn't God's plan for him to come naturally so I had to get induced so I went into the hospital on August the 3rd and there was a lot going on on August the 3rd so I didn't go into the hospital to get induced and I didn't get to the hospital until like maybe 1 30 to yeah like about 1 a.m. I think I got to the hospital um, and they took me in so that was good so by the time that you get in you sign in they and then you sign in again and then you sign in again and then um, you have to sign paperwork and the nurse actually told me that I had to take a shower uh, before getting induced. Why? I don't know. Oh, I think she said something about maybe getting a, if, if for whatever reason I had to get a C-section that I had to like take a shower. So I don't know. That's just what my hospital did. But yeah. And I do want to say that my hos the hospital where I gave birth was just really amazing. Everybody was just so nice and so understanding and just like that genuinely cared about you as a person and not just like a client a patient you know what i mean they genuinely cared about you and i really uh my husband and i really did enjoy like really did like that about this hospital and yeah i did want to mention that so we felt very very comfortable so the way that i got induced was by a pill um i don't know the name of the pill but if i do happen to find it i will put it here so you guys can uh, see it and pretty much the pill what it does it like helps the soften the cervix so you know you can eventually go into labor um and i did want to mention also and if i'm saying um um in this video i don't know why i keep doing that so please excuse excuse me but so when i came so yeah when i came in uh they checked me to see how many centimeters i was dilated and i was two centimeters dilated so keep in mind that I was one centimeter dilated for four weeks and I went to the doctor in the morning to get checked because my I went to the OBGYN to get checked in the morning and I was still one centimeter dilated. And actually when I got to the hospital, I kind of low-key started to feel like contractions. Like, I don't know, I felt like I was kind of like going into labor already. So keep that in mind throughout the video. I felt like I was going into labor and when I got to the hospital I was two centimeters dilated so I was like hey maybe I'm like naturally going into labor so I told the nurse that I was like I had been one centimeter dilated for four weeks and actually in the morning I was one centimeter dilated so um I told her like hey you know I might be going into labor like naturally you know and she was like oh that's actually going to help if you are with the medicine and how you're gonna get induced so I was like oh, okay cool 
So I drank the pill and I think you had to drink another pill two to three hours after that pill. So I drank the pill and honestly I didn't feel anything. I was kind of feeling like a little bit of like period cramps and it wasn't too intense so I actually fell asleep for that time being in there. I didn't feel anything at all. Um, so after the time passed I had to drink another pill and as soon as I drank the second pill you guys It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up It was so intense like the the contractions was so 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 intense I honestly did not expect it to be like that um, I am a first-time mom so I did not expect the pain to be that intense like you always hear about it in like movies or like for example, me, I would watch YouTube videos about labor and deliveries, like labor and delivery stories, because they're, first of all, they're entertaining, and I wanted to know what I was getting myself into, and that's actually one of the main reasons why I decided to make this video, because I wanted to be informative, and if it can help a mommy out there, a future mommy, I, I feel like I succeeded at this video, so yeah. So anyways, so yeah, I drank the second pill. I started feeling super nauseous because the pain was really intense and they told me that they can give me something for the nausea through the IV. So I was like, go ahead because I am not feeling it. Also keep in mind, I actually gave birth in a world pandemic, of course, just my luck. Um, so prior to getting induced, I had to get tested for COVID three days prior to getting induced and which makes no freaking sense to me is like they make you go get a test they make you they literally make you they said if you don't go get tested you're not gonna get a bed like you're not gonna get induced so they literally force you to go get tested and keep in mind I didn't go out anywhere during my pregnancy because I was pregnant and they kept saying that your immune system is down during your pregnancy and that you're actually a high risk to get COVID. So during this time, I was not risking it. I was not about to get COVID while I have my baby in the womb, period. Period. So, yeah, I didn't go out anywhere. So I was like, why do I have to get tested? I don't even go out anywhere. But they literally forced me to get the COVID test. So I did. So I was like, okay, so I guess I don't have to wear the mask during the COVID because they literally just tested me. And no, they made me wear a mask. So keep in mind, you are going to through labor. You are going through the contractions. You can't even breathe properly and you have to wear a mask. So during this time, TMI, but um, I started feeling super nauseous. So I actually started throwing up. I threw up about four times, I think, uh, during this time. And it actually helped me out because I didn't have to wear my mask. So it actually worked out for me um, because when the nurse got there, she told me that I had to wear the mask during the whole time. And when once I started throwing up, obviously you can't wear a mask while that's happening. So yeah, that actually helped me out. So she was just really cool, uh, at the end, like cool about it. She was just like, okay, whatever, like just take it off because there's a lot going on with you pretty much. Um, so yeah, I didn't have to wear the mask on that. But if you're going into labor during this time, you do have to wear the mask. And if you are getting induced, for whatever reason you have to get tested for COVID. at least that's what happened to me um so yeah that happened and then let's see oh and by the way guys if you see me looking down i actually have my notebook i wrote i wrote uh things down because for some reason when you go into labor after you don't really remember things so i decided to write it down because what a better sorry what a better way to remember than to write it down so also at 7 a.m they had to sw 6 or 7 a.m i really don't remember you see this is what i mean um so during this time they the overnight nurse left and then the nurse that was with me during my whole labor pretty much came in and this is when my well actually when she came in this is when my contractions really started to kick in it was so bad so she came in and checked me and i was two centimeters dilated still um, and it was just really intense. She saw me not being able to breathe and I was like hyperventilating and it was just really intense So she asked me if I wanted to get the epidural um, Prior to going into labor. I was like, man, I'm gonna try to do this without no epidural, you know, I can handle uh, I can handle it and all of this stuff, honey That's not the case. That was not the case 
I started to feel super bad, so I told her to get the epidural. Um, if you do decide to get the epidural, uh, something to keep in mind is that they don't come immediately, especially if there's other people giving labor and they ask for the epidural first. Like for me, for example, like somebody asked it before me, so it actually took like about an hour for the anesthesiologist to come in and put the epidural on. So yeah, if you want to get it, I suggest just ask for it because it takes a while for them to come and put the epidural on and honestly i don't think i would get the epidural now thinking about it um because till this day i have back pain and it's just what happens to some people you know i definitely have a lot of back pain now and it's just things that happen because of getting the epidural but that's just another story about my postpartum so if you do want a postpartum video don't forget to like this video so i know that you guys want a postpartum one so yes after that um the the nurse checked me again because a cup uh, like a few hours had passed like a few hours passed by so she checked me again i was two centimeters dilated and then the okay so finally the anesthesiologist came by and during this time i was dying, dying, dying. literally i was I was feeling so, so, so bad. So, so bad. It's just, it's just something that you cannot describe unless you go into labor, honey. <laughs> Period. So, yeah. Uh, so they put the epidural on and guess what? So let me tell you about some of cosas, I swear, dude. The epidural didn't work on me. I was still feeling the contractions and some time passed by and the nurse was like, okay, it's like about time for you not to feel the contractions. I was still feeling the contractions. So I literally fucked up my back for no damn reason. Well, in a way, like it worked and it didn't. I'm going to get to that part. Um, so I was still feeling the contractions and she told me that I would have to wait and then there's like a button that you can press to for the epidural to be released a little bit more through... Um, it's like a button that you press so it can like pretty much release some release some liquid that can pretty much help you so uh, they pressed the button they waited a little longer nothing i was still feeling the contractions they pressed it again nothing i was still feeling the contractions um so she uh, she told me that there's another thing another medicine that they can put through the iv that would help me pretty much with the contraction. So during this whole time, I got the freaking epidural and it did not work with the contractions. It was just not working. So they called the anesthesiologist again. He checked me and, oh no, 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 wait, wait, let's go back a little bit. Sorry, let's go back a little bit. So because I was dying during the time that the anesthesiologist was putting the epidural, he was like, he asked like, he asked the nurse like how many centimeters dilated is she and keep in mind sorry but i feel so embarrassed but i was only two centimeters dilated when i asked for the epidural but when the doctor came and keep in mind this was a maybe an hour wait for the epidural so when i was getting the epidural the anesthesiologist asked like how many centimeters i was dilated and the nurse said only two and um she he said it doesn't seem like she's only two centimeters because she looks really in pain you should check her again after i give the epidural so when she checked me again i was six centimeters dilated so i went from two to six like in a matter of an hour pretty much so that was good because that means I'm a step closer, you know, to meeting my son. And so the anesthes so back to the to the epidural, it didn't work. So he came back again, I think like an hour later. And he came back and they put something through the IV, which was another type of medicine. I really don't know the name of these uh, medicines, but when once they put that one on, I stopped feeling the contractions for about an hour so uh my labor was my active labor was just six hours with pushing the baby out and everything i really feel lucky to you know like be in labor for only six hours and just push for like 30 minutes and the baby come out i honestly feel so grateful because i didn't go through labor for a very long time and i think a tip that i can give uh, my pregnant women out there is walk 
walk, 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 just walk. My mom would take me, me llevaba a caminar todos los días y me llevaba a caminar todos los días, casi hasta los domingos. A veces nos íbamos a caminar and it was just something that I feel like that's what really helped me go into labor so fast. And when I mean I was walking, I don't mean like 30 minutes. We would walk like an hour, 40 minutes every single day. And I walked like my, when I was already nine months pregnant, I told my mom, like, I can't do it. Like, it's just too much. Like, he keeps hitting my bladder. Um, my back was in so much pain. My back was in extreme amount of pain. Like, that was one of the, the things that I pretty much like suffer throughout my whole pregnancy um also if you want to learn a little bit more about my pregnancy i have my uh, get ready with me where i talk a little bit about my pregnancy and i will put it down in the description box if you guys are interested in watching that uh about my pregnancy but yeah so in my when i was nine months pregnant i told my mom like i don't think i can go walking anymore and she did not care she's like nope we're gonna go we're gonna go like um you need to get that baby out you know what i mean so even at like 40 weeks 39 weeks I was still walking that long I would literally force my body to walk and keep in mind when you're at the last weeks of pregnancy your body is so exhausted like it's working overtime during this time and it's just like I don't even know how I did it but my mom was a really good support so you definitely want to have that support to like be committed to go walking with you because if you go by yourself like it's I don't know I never went by myself but I don't think I would have walked that long if I didn't have my mom so shout out to my mom if you're watching this video um yes so yeah during this time it was just what I can say to that really helped me to give labor this quick is just walking um so I'm definitely going to be walking a lot if I go into labor if I have another kid so yeah um so so yeah an hour passed and I was six centimeters dilated I got the other medicine and I think maybe like two hours passed by and I started feeling like this sharp pain on the right side of my stomach and it was so uh, somewhere like close to my rib cage uh, that's where it was so when I called uh, on my nurse, my nurse had actually stepped out for lunch, but another nurse came by and she told me that they needed to check me to see how many centimeters I was dilated. And luckily, um, she's like, let me go check on your nurse to see if she's almost back. So luckily my nurse had came back from lunch already and she checked me and she told me I was 10 centimeters dilated already. So this was in a matter of six hours, you know what I mean? So no, not even probably like five. Yeah, like five hours into my active labor, I was already 10 centimeters dilated. And I'm really, really thankful for that. Um, I heard stories where women are in labor for like three freaking days. And I really, you're a warrior if you can do that. Because honestly, I don't even know how I did the six hours. It was just really intense. Um, so yeah. So after that, my nurse checked me and I was 10 centimeters dilated. And she's like, girl, it's time to push you are 10 centimeters dilated and i was like what and i couldn't believe it i was like that fast and she's like yeah i'm like okay so this is where i say the epidural did work or maybe it was the other medicine that they put through my iv because honestly my le like the bottom half of my body like from my hips down to my toes were dead completely dead i did like you could probably punch me in there and I would not feel a thing I was completely dead and it's such a scary feeling you know what I mean like to feel your body like not corresponding like not working um, I couldn't even lift up my leg so when she uh, when she checked me she was like oh do you do you feel like your legs or do you feel anything down here and I was like nope she's like can you lift up your leg and I was like uh nope I couldn't do anything so because I couldn't feel anything um, during this time, like my, I couldn't feel myself pushing, you know what I mean? So it was just really, really bad. Also, I just started getting a, I still, I started getting like this really, really intense back pain during this time too. Um, and 
yeah so my baby was actually sunny side up and at the end of the labor he decided to turn pretty much and like come out it was just really ugh, now that i think about it i'm like getting the chills um so yeah he was sunny side up and when a baby's sunny side up honestly you can push and push and push in certain t uh certain okay like times that you can push for like two hours and the baby will just not come out because he is like he's backwards you know what i mean um so yeah pretty much what that means and i have it here in google is uh the baby's position head down but facing mom's abdomen so the baby's skull is against the back of your pelvis pretty much so yeah i started getting this super intense lower back pain and she was like oh the baby's sunny side up and they're my and because your legs are pretty much dead and everything you might have a c-section i started crying i just started like crying and crying and crying and crying i did not want to get a c-section and that's something that i was really terrified of getting i did not want to have a c-section um that just wasn't in my plans but keep in mind you go in thinking that things are going to go a certain way and honestly it's just not what you want it's what your body wants and what your baby needs at the end of the day so yeah it was um so during this time also my baby had already pooped and if if the baby poops they pretty much can eat their poop and they can go into like one of their organs and stuff so it started really getting like okay you either need to push this baby out or you're going into a c-section and my husband knew how strongly i felt about not getting a c-section you know and also i did want to give a shout out to my husband because he was really amazing such a support like such an amazing support honestly without him and my nurse i wouldn't have been able to get through this he was really supportive and just being there and just making me feel comfortable and making me feel like i got this you know what i mean so my my husband knew that i felt like really strong about getting not getting a c-section but he was like you know what at the end of the day what matters is that the baby's okay and that you're okay you know so at the end of the day if it needs to happen it's gonna happen and i was just like okay with the like okay if it happens it happens but i'm gonna give him my best for it not to happen you know what i mean so when my nurse saw that the baby had pooped he told she told me that i that he that she will let the baby pretty much do the work for me and let him come down as much as he can and also to give my legs for them to like kind of respond a little bit like my bottom half of my body to respond because i was not going to pretty much feel anything down there um so yeah that happened so i was just there waiting and i started feeling obviously i think i was without pain with only like about an hour and like in between an hour to two hours um and after that i started getting the pain here like close to my rib cage and i started feeling the pain on my back so i told her i was like you know what if we're gonna do this let's just do it i'm ready can i start pushing already and she's like yes um so her and another nurse had to pretty much pick up my legs um because i could not do it my legs were dead so my husband and, and the nurse picked up my legs and i pretty much just started to push you know and once i started pushing i literally pushed for like 30 minutes i think but um you know i kept pushing and pushing and she was like you know what we're gonna prepare the room for the c-section and <laughs> i started crying and i prayed i was like you know what god you know if if it's in your plans for me to get a c-section but if you could really help me out i would really appreciate it like i really don't want to have a c-section and that was something that i was really put praying about a lot too so yeah they had the room ready for the c-section and the actual doctor that does the delivery came in and he he was like oh um yeah i'm gonna give you one more push and if you don't push the baby out we're gonna go into the the c-section room uh to the to do the emergency section c-section and i was and the nurse was like you know what give it all you got you got this like you're strong you can do it um he's right there you know and girl i pushed him out i literally pushed him out once they gave me the last push the baby turned around pretty much and came out and the doctor wasn't even ready he didn't have his gloves on and so when i pushed the baby out like half of his body was out because my husband told me so half of his body was out 
and they were like no don't push don't push like the doctor's not ready i was like <laughs> like i don't care if he's ready or not like i've been waiting for this moment like get him out you know what i mean so my baby was born on august 4th my angel sent from god he is so beautiful he is the most amazing little boy he is so smart and i am literally obsessed with him all i do is just stare at him all day he is my whole world in one little human being like he is so amazing um and yeah my little aj came out and he is perfect so because i because he pooped i wasn't able to get skin to skin immediately uh they had to like check him out and this little boy did not cry either so i was like what's going on so you're thinking like in the movies the baby comes out and like he's crying and like you know you hear that he's alive pretty much um so he came out and he wasn't crying and i was like why is he not crying like and that is so funny because my mom told me that when i was born i didn't cry either and my mom was like what's going on like why is she not crying you know so the same he did the same thing that i did to my mom pretty much um so i was like why is he not crying is he okay like is he okay and they were like yeah yeah he's fine he's he's here like he's gorgeous you know and they pretty much just went like that and just showed it to me and then like took him away and i had they had to like pretty much take out the placenta and i did tear up i think i got like a second degree tear up which i didn't feel anything because keep in mind i did not feel anything from my bottom half um so yeah they had to sew me up and take out the placenta so i think a question that i had during prior to my labor i was like does like delivering your placenta hurt and after delivering a baby and feeling all the contractions honestly you don't even really feel the placenta you do feel pressure in your stomach and like them trying to take it out but it's not as bad as like a whole human being coming out of there you know what i mean so yeah after that they cleaned him up they make sure that he was okay you know because he he did poop um so yeah he was fine he was good and then finally i got to meet my little boy and saw him for the first time and honestly it is such a amazing feeling it is just like your whole world right in front of you it's just wow something that you cannot describe unless you go through it yourself so yeah i'm very very grateful and i feel very blessed to have had a pregnancy and to have had that i gave birth to my son and that it was so quick and honestly i i thank god because i did pray a lot for my labor and i had my family praying for me and honestly prayer really does work uh i was actually praying out loud out loud i did not care in the in the emergent in the room and so yeah prayer helps a lot too so i definitely recommend that it makes you feel more at peace and more at ease so don't forget to pray that's something that definitely helps too um so yeah i gave birth and i was extremely hungry and i asked the nurse you know if i could eat after so if that's something that you're asking yourself yes you can eat right after too uh so yeah pretty much that's it for my labor story i gave birth i saw my baby and um they moved me from the room and also I did not feel my the bottom of my body like until the next like towards the end end of the day I think it was like maybe 3 a.m. when I started feeling like my leg and one one leg and then the other leg would just not come back to reality like it was dead um, for a very long time so yeah that happened too and yeah that's pretty much it that's how I gave birth to my baby boy and I am so happy and, and I feel so much love from him I am just so happy that's the only thing that I can say but yeah that's pretty much my labor story um sorry that I was all over the place but it's just it's labor labor is all over the place and I hope that it was helpful at least to one future mommy out there and if you are pregnant and you're scared don't be scared you're a woman you're 
your body was made for this and you got this don't don't be scared you think about that you're gonna get to meet your your baby and it's gonna be soon in your arms so just remember that while you're in labor and you will get through it and yeah pretty much that is it for today's video if you enjoyed this video and would like a postpartum update don't forget to give me a thumbs up comment down anything in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel that will mean a lot to me and i will see you guys on my next video